Okay, this is a bit of a computer mod that I'm going to be working on here. Um, I want to add a second hard drive to this mini ITX computer that uh, I've had. This is probably going to end up in Mexico um, in our boutique and it's only got enough room for one hard drive which you see right here and there is no place to mount a second hard drive at all. There's only space here, you know, where these cables are, but there's no way to mount it. So I'm going to make my own little hard drive mount. I've got an old Seagate hard drive. This is actually bad, so I'm going to use this as my um, test piece, so to speak, to uh, get some marks and uh, get things lined up of where I want it to go. And what I have here is a couple of old hard drive mounting brackets. So I've actually had these sitting around. I've got a lot of spare parts here and there and figured well I might as well use these to somehow rig a mount up in here so I can have a second hard drive for more storage. So um, my intention here is to mount it using the existing four screws here on the bottom of the hard drive and mount it to these brackets and then in turn line up the holes on the base here and drill new holes to run screws through to anchor the brackets in place and then connect everything up with an existing power cable but being that it's SATA I've got a Molex to SATA uh, connector here and so I'll use that for my power and then an extra SATA cable for data transfer to connect to the mini ITX motherboard. So, and this is uh, AT3IONT-I made by Asus. You can see that in there. But, uh, yeah, running 4 gigs of memory, Windows 7 Ultimate. It's got a 250 gig operating system hard drive. A little tiny power supply. Uh, it's only 220 watts, but it'll be sufficient to power you know, a second hard drive. Um, I know the processor on this is not real fast. It's a, a dual 1.3 gig, so you know, not the fastest thing in the world by all means. But it'll suffice for what I want, what I want to do, and for when I get it to Mexico. You know, this will be the new computer we use in our boutique so I'll get started uh, rigging up this mount and installing it. Well, there's the brackets. But after further inspection I don't think that's going to work. I've got not enough space to fit that in there. It's going to be too tall so I think I can rig these on the sides the side mounts there then I guess I'll have to rethink how I'm gonna mount this thing uh, to the underside so it doesn't slide around in there if the computer is moved so yeah back to the drawing board well I'm still having a dilemma here these brackets are just too large to try to mount either on the side or on the underside because of the space and there's just like no room. That's the hard drive just sitting on the bottom there, which is not good. Um, so I may have to put some sort of spacers in there and just mark the holes on the underside of the hard drive to run screws through. But yeah, I'll need to get some sort of spacers under there to see if I can make this work. Because right now it's, uh, yeah, unfortunately I can't use those. So, if I just had a little bit more room, it wouldn't be that big of a deal, but I don't, so uh, I guess I'll just go ahead and try to mark my holes, and that's what I'll probably do, is just drill through the bottom and put some spacers in there to get the bottom of this hard drive off the bottom of the case and mount it that way. Okay, so I got the computer upside down and I got my screws on the underside there so I can mark them and 
give it my best guess here on drilling the holes so all right let's see how this works out all right so I've got two holes drilled already checked it out and perfect right on the money for those two I was gonna put a couple more over here on this edge but with this rib here um, I can't get an accurate mark and I don't want to wind up putting too many holes or whatever so I mean really I just need something to anchor this hard drive in place also have some extra rubber mounts I've got two here actually four total so I'm gonna put two on each one to kind of give it a little bit of space and also uh, rubber insulation to keep it off the case and then I'll just figure something out to kind of lift this edge up um, keep it off the case as well but mostly just something for support to um, yeah, keep that off the case you know metal to metal so to speak but uh, yeah so I got two there and now I'll just go ahead and get that in and run the screws and we'll see how it goes alright another fun challenge is getting those washers to stay in place while you slide it in that little tight spot there and actually I could probably just use these other mounting screws to act as spacers to kind of keep that circuit board off of the uh, bottom of the case here so yeah I'll go ahead and get this inserted now and get the screws in those holes and mount it in place well here's an even better idea little brass spacers like you used to use on the older motherboards I think these will work quite nicely. So you've got the threaded holes for the screws and the other two will just be for again spacing keeping the circuit board off of the bottom of the case here so yeah this is much better than using tape and trying to line up rubber washers there so let's well, see how this works All right. It is lined up. Move it a little bit, but yep, that's the mounts right there. So now I just got to run my screws in there and hold it in place. And this should work. And done. That'll work out great. I'll see how it looks on the inside here. Alright, there it is. A little pressed up against the uh, main power cable to the motherboard. There's not, again, not a whole lot of room here, but, uh, yeah, that's, uh, that's pretty good. Can't quite get underneath the hard drive there, but it's got plenty of space for airflow. There's one of the mounts. So, the fan that I have on the side of the case right here that I rigged up, that should be sufficient to blow across the motherboard and this other hard drive, so, because there's really, again, no room for another fan in this tiny case so well finally got the new replacement hard drive certified repaired I guess that's my warranty replacement but I notice this thing is a bit thinner than my original drive I almost put them uh, side by side almost this is the old drive but it's a good I don't know quarter to half inch difference in thickness. Well, this almost looks like it might be a laptop drive, but uh, I don't know. I mean, it'll still work. It's still 500 gigs. So, yeah, I'll go ahead and put the pieces, uh, these little brackets on the bottom here, and uh, slide it in, and we'll fire it up. Alright, it is in, and yeah, it is a lot less cramped in there up against that uh, uh, main connection the set of wires that power the motherboard so that's great so yeah that's actually a bit of a space saver for me there so I'll go ahead and connect it and button this thing back up alright power connections are in place and we're ready to button this thing back up 
All right, covers back on, and that's my fan that I've had mounted that I rigged up on the side here for better airflow. And I'll go ahead and hook it up and see how it goes. All right, powering it up. There's the AT3IONT-I, made by Asus. It's actually a pretty stout little motherboard, but again, micro ITX, not a whole lot you can do with that. But uh, anyway, we'll let the boot go and show you on the back side here. There's the fan, little LED light for display. But, uh, yep, and then my little DP port for my video card here. It's a dual display um, rigged to a, a DVI cable there. And starting windows. Going through its updates. Yeah, again, not the fastest thing for boot up. I guess now it's got a restart. Yay. Maybe there's a quick setup before it disappears. That's all my stats on this computer. Alright, let's try this again. Now that all the updates have initialized. And using again Windows 7 Ultimate. Wow. Ridiculously slow. Still configuring updates. Any day now. There we go. So now should be picking up my hard drive. Or I may have to go in and in the computer management and initialize it. Yeah, I think that's what I'm going to have to do. All right, so we'll go into administrative tools, computer management. Now we go in into storage, disk management. And get these drives to come up. Okay. All right, that's what I'm looking for. I must initialize the disk and the logical disk manager. So go ahead and select master boot record. Now it shows as unallocated. This will be a new simple volume. Next, next. We'll let that be drive E for now, but I'm going to switch the letters here in a minute and do a 
quick format and there you go it is formatting and shows healthy and it is done so now what I'm gonna do because the disk drive is showing is D I want to change that change the letter and we'll go we'll go F for now to get the letter D freed up and now that's changed and then this one will do the same thing we will change the drive letter and make this one the letter D and that's okay so now one more time this one now we'll make this drive E and it is done so now I go to my computer down here and it should show the new volume D that is a 500 gig which is actually 465 and it works so we're ready to roll and this will be my new storage drive for this computer that's going to Mexico alright that's it thanks for watching